Um, I found the car, now I needed a motor. And I thought, well, there's places where you can buy electric motors specifically for electric vehicles through a lot of online mail order places. They're very nice, they get expensive quick. And I thought, what's a good way to save money? Anything that's mass manufactured is cheap. If somebody makes a million of something, they're gonna sell it to you a lot cheaper than if somebody has to custom make one thing. And probably the number one electric vehicle we have in this country is the electric forklift. It's just they're working hard round the clock in warehouses around the country instead of out on the freeway. So I was at a rummage sale one day and the guy had a lot of equipment in, a, in his garage including half a forklift. And what he was gonna do was use the hydraulics on it to make a, a, a car lift. So he could pull his car in, lift it up, change the oil and, and work on the exhaust system. Things I don't have to do anymore. And uh, so he had this forklift sitting in the corner and this is the motor in the forklift. I walked over there, I looked down and went, huh, you wanna sell me that motor? And he said, uh, sure, 50 bucks. And so I went back to my pickup truck, I pulled out one of those 12 volt portable jump starters, kind of the jumper cables with a battery. I put it on the power connectors on this motor, nothing happened. I grabbed the end of the motor, I gave it a little shove, and it kept spinning from the power from the battery. And I thought, well, it's an electric motor, it works, no, not very well, but it works, and it's about the right size and shape, so I give the guy 50 bucks, and then I pulled the motor out of there, and I spent the rest of the afternoon degreasing and de-rusting this sucker, and I had never done this before. I have no idea how to rebuild an electric motor, but I do have a library card, and I went to the library, I got a book on electric motors, and basically in a 300-page book, it says pull out the two bolts on either end, pull the middle spinny part out, clean that off, pull the uh, electromagnet coil thingies out, clean those off, put it all back together. So in essentially one afternoon, I went from that to that. And that is a rebuilt electric motor. Um, spent five bucks on a can of yellow spray paint to make the outside look pretty. The, uh, the green part, that's the, um, I'm not even, I don't even know this terminology. Jeez, what the hell am I doing up here? Um, the, the coils, the magnets in there have a layer of, um, it, it's an epoxy to uh, uh, protect the coils and uh, insulate them. That is a 10 inch diameter motor. Motors are generally measured um, by their diameter. Um, basically that motor is that big around and that long. And in terms of its weight, I don't remember if I ever put it on a scale, but it's definitely um, two grunts on the pickup scale. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, that, it, it, was, it was heavy. But generally you wanna use a motor that's somewhere between probably about 100 and 150 pounds, um, nine, nine inches on up in terms of diameter is pretty good. Um, 12 inches is freaking ginormous. Um, I'll, later I'll show you a 12 inch forklift motor we're putting into a friend's pickup truck and he's gonna burn rubber like crazy on that thing. <laughs> uh, usually electric motors have um, an ID plate on them and it'll tell you the the voltage and the horsepower and that sort of thing. This motor did not have that on there. Uh, absolutely no information about it. It is a series wound motor and there's a couple of different styles of motor. Um, also this is a DC motor. DC power is direct current, is the type of power you get out of batteries. AC current is the type that you get out of the wall. Obviously we want a motor that's gonna run on batteries, otherwise we're gonna need a really long extension cord for the car. <laughs> Um, the next step was designing an adapter plate, some way to physically connect the, uh, the motor to the transmission, because the engine was designed to mate directly up to the transmission, and this motor isn't. So that means it's time for something custom. And I think, oh gosh, how am I gonna do something custom here? And it kind of dawned on me when I had the end of this motor sort of all greasy and everything, that if I set it down on a piece of paper, it would leave marks. So basically what I did was I, you know, I took the two bolts out of the end of that motor, pulled that end part off, I flopped it down on a piece of tag board. You can see where the grease that was on there just left marks. And then I took a pencil, traced around the thing. Wherever there were holes, I just marked a center dot there and then also marked whether it was a, you know, a, a 5 16 hole or a half inch hole or whatever it happened to be. And then I took that sheet of paper 
over to a machinist. I actually found out about a guy locally who, he's a machinist by day and he works on hot rods at night. And uh, a really cool guy. And I said, hey, can you help me with this? I want to bolt a motor to a transmission. Here's a piece of paper with the shape of it on here and the holes marked and everything. And he said, yeah, yeah, sounds like a cool project. So he did a couple other things for me besides working on the adapter plate. He did um, uh, a little bit of the other machining I'll show you here in a few minutes. But um, basically all the complicated like custom metal parts, I just had somebody else do for about $300 total, which was um, you know, roughly a third of my entire budget on this project. Um, he also did a little tin template for me so that um, I could test the piece out first, make sure that it, it fit right and it matched. And then the final piece was a nice half inch thick chunk of aluminum that fits perfectly on that motor end. And then that piece can be bolted between the motor and the transmission. So I know this is a little dark here, but uh, that's half inch plate aluminum. Uh, thickness of that doesn't really matter that much other than you have to account for the length of the drive shaft on the motor and the length of the driven shaft in the transmission and just make sure that they end up somewhere near each other so that you can connect the two together. Um, I actually did run into that as an issue initially. It was a little bit um, hard to get them quite where I wanted them. And what we did was we ended up uh, making a second plate. You could also do some spacers, like just some uh, like cylinders with a hole in the middle that a bolt goes through, something like that. Um, and since this was done up on a, a fancy machine, you know, basically the next day at, at work on the guy's lunch hour, he said, beep, make me another one of those. And, you know, boom, had another one all done up. So here's the, uh, the adapter plate on the end of the motor, and we can see the uh, drive shaft of the motor sticking out here. Now for another crazy complicated custom part, the coupler. 